Together, Tableau and Azure SQL Data Warehouse are a powerful combination for interactively exploring your data, finding answers to questions you never even knew that you had, and sharing those findings with other people in your organization. Azure SQL Data Warehouse is built in the Azure Cloud, and it's great for interactive analysis. You'll see as we rebuild this visualization here about long New York City taxi rides. So let's get started by connecting. Now, Tableau can connect to dozens of different data sources, but today, obviously, we're going to be connecting to Azure SQL Data Warehouse. All I need to do to connect is enter my server, my database, my username, and my password. We're enabling a direct connection here, which leverages the power of the database in Tableau. And on the left-hand side, Tableau will display the tables that are available to me within the database. In this case, we're going to be connecting to the 2014 table, which shows all of the taxi rides in New York City in 2014. You can see once I drag and drop onto the canvas, Tableau shows me the fields that are in the database. We can even bring back some rows to see what they look like. And if we wanted to, we could even transform the data within this window. We could join in other tables just by dragging and dropping. Or if we wanted to, we could actually join tables from other completely disparate data sources. Today, we're just going to get started interactively exploring this data. Now, Tableau splits our table into dimensions and measures. So dimensions are categorical fields, and measures are numerical fields, things that you sum and aggregate. Now, they aren't necessarily just numbers and then, uh, and then string fields, because you can see that rate code has been correctly categorized by Tableau as a dimension. So Tableau does a lot of that data cleaning that traditionally is very difficult. It actually is pretty smart in picking up special types of data, like dates and times and geography, so that you can just kind of start exploring your data on the fly. Here you can see when we're looking at payment type, there's significantly more people who are paying with card than cash in 2014. Now, the other thing that's interesting about this data set is that we've got hundreds and hundreds of millions of records here. and you can see I'm dragging and dropping and interactively working with this, and Azure SQL Data Warehouse is returning these queries immediately. So the experience is very fast, even though it's a direct connection. Let's continue to dig into this so you can see that on an even greater scale. Instead of looking at this payment type, just, just looking at it overall, what I'd like to do is see this over time. So in other words, during the course of a day, does the percentage of people who are paying with cash and card change as the day goes on. Tableau gives me the flexibility to view my data in multiple different ways. So I can view it as a categorical field like hour or I could view it as a continuous field. With dates you need this flexibility. Alright, so we can see some relatively unsurprising information here late at night. Not many people uh, taking taxis, they're probably sleeping early in the morning. You see a spike around 8 and 9 when people are commuting. And then later in the day, uh, after work and when people are going to social events and things like that, uh, you see a much bigger spike in taxi rides. So again, not too surprising. But I want to look at this data in a slightly different way. Now, interactively exploring your data, in order to do that, you need a really quick database which we have in Azure SQL Data Warehouse. And we also need the flexibility to change our visualization in any way that might be useful for us. So instead of looking at this as the total, what I'm going to do is look at it as the percent of total. So in other words, for each hour, what's the percentage of people who are paying with cash and what's the percentage who are paying with cart? You can see that this changes over time. At 4 a.m. is the highest time in the day for people paying with cash. Conversely, at around 8 a.m., this is the highest time for people paying with card. Now we can change this visualization, even though Tableau will create the visualization automatically for us, we can also very easily change how it's viewed so that we can see this distinction a little bit more clearly. We're going to use an area chart to do that. This makes a lot of sense to me. I mean, at 4 a.m. Or, or even later in the evening, you're probably more likely to have cash on you than you are in the in the morning when you're going to work. You're not going to go to the ATM before work, right? But if you're going out on time, you might have some cash on hand. So that kind of makes sense. We'll name this payment method by pickup time. Now, I'd also like to see this in still another way. And again, 
As you're using and analyzing data, it's important to be able to continue to iterate and change this data as you go along. Now my next question is not related to time, but does the percentage of people who are paying with cash and card change depending on the amount of the fare? So we'll take total amount and what we'll do is turn that into a bin. Now a bin is just a categorical field that's made up of a numerical field. So we're just taking everything that's from 0 to 25, grouping that, 26 to $50, we're grouping that, 51 to 75, you get the idea. And again, to, we don't have to recreate this entire visualization. We can just drop this right on top of our and it'll replace it. Now you can see, and again, keep in mind that I have a direct connection to Azure SQL Data Warehouse here, and I'm interactively exploring this, this hundreds of millions of rows data set. Uh, so you, know, you have a, a lot of power with, with the database um, to interactively explore, which is something that's actually pretty rare. And we can actually exclude with Tableau, so all of those, uh, those single records out at the end and the high end of this taxi data set we can get rid of. And now we can see that the distribution of people that are paying with cash is much higher for lower fares. So if you have a 10 on you, you're probably going to pay with cash when you're getting out of the cab because it's easier and quicker. But as you get higher, you know, the percentage of people that are paying with cash goes significantly lower. Interestingly though, as we get here towards the higher end of the spectrum, it goes up from 8% at 225 to 16% to 30% at $500. So what I'm kind of curious about is who are the people who are taking these really, really expensive taxi journeys, you know? So let's filter down to just that subset of people. And what we're going to do here is a keep only. And that seems really pretty straightforward, right? We're just looking at those particular those particular taxi rides. But this is actually something that's relatively complex and in a lot of analysis tools isn't possible. Luckily, this is going to allow us to apply this context to the entire data set. So now everything that we're working with is just going to be looking at these expensive journeys. We'll name this payment method by cost. Like I was saying, I kind of want to see a little bit more about these expensive journeys. So let's see where people are traveling from. Now Tableau has the end latitude and longitude as well as the start latitude and longitude. All right, so let's get started. Now with Tableau, when you're dealing with state, city, country, you can just double click to visualize it. Here we have actual latitude and longitude. So what I'm going to do is put the latitude on the rows, longitude on columns, and you see Tableau automatically makes a map for us. Now, I think we may have um, some data that's inaccurate. I doubt people are starting New York City taxi journeys in the Bahamas or at Knoll Island here. So those are probably just inaccuracies, but we can zoom in and take a closer look at the journeys that are actually beginning in New York City. Now because of the number of marks that we're viewing here, this is millions of taxi journeys we're looking at on one single map, I'm going to make these much smaller so we can define and see where they're occurring a little bit easier. We can also kind of play with this a little bit um, and, and change it so it's a little bit more on theme here. We're dealing with taxi data, so I think some black and yellow is, is certainly in order. And let's zoom in a little bit further. Well, this actually isn't too surprising here. You can see a lot of pickups and the beginning of journeys happening at the airports and at the roads that are leading in from Newark here, LaGuardia, and JFK. And then we have lots of journeys from people in the outlying uh, counties and boroughs as they are calling taxis to come and pick them up and bring them in. So that makes sense. We'll name this Trip Starts. Now again, we're going to duplicate this to look at Trip Ends. Again, we're continuing to iterate on this analysis, and it's interesting because being able to iterate like this is really one of the more important things when you're evaluating how you want to analyze your data, because if you can't change your analysis to suit the questions that you have, then you're not going to be able to answer them.
All right, again, we have a significant amount of data that's kind of outlying, but actually I can believe that there's probably some, some journey ends in Boston. That's it's kind of crazy, but certainly possible, right, that people would take a, a taxi ride to Boston. <laughs> probably pretty expensive. Here we can zoom in. And it's what's interesting about the end of the journeys here is that you see slightly less around the airports. You can see that the darkness and the concentration is significantly more in the outlying boroughs and counties. In order to analyze this a little bit further, what I want to do is bring this all into one dashboard so that I can begin to interactively make these pieces work with one another. Let's do that. Now keep in mind, everything that I've been doing so far today, I've been using a direct connection to Azure SQL Data Warehouse. This is hundreds of millions of records. And you're seeing me work with this data in a really fluid and easy manner. And if I was continually waiting on the database or if it was not returning the data that I needed as quickly as I wanted, this experience of kind of exploring the data would pretty much be impossible. Now, Tableau gives you a lot of flexibility with how you display, how you look at your data, and in how you analyze it. So let's go ahead and dig in to the payment by cost. I want to know where are the really expensive taxi journeys? Where are they starting? Where are they ending? What are the pickup times? What does this look like in the context of this greater data set? So I'm just going to select those and you can see I've enabled this as a filter. So when I deselect or excuse me, when I release here, it's going to start filtering the entire data set. There we are. In a couple of seconds, we can see trip starts again, centralized in Manhattan, LaGuardia, JFK. It's interesting, there's really none in Newark, which surprises me a little bit. And then trip ends, uh, also very interesting. We have a lot there ending out in, in Long Island, in New Jersey, but it looks like we have a high concentration in the southern part of Connecticut. Now, of course, anybody who knows about the geography of the area knows that this is around Greenwich, so this is a very kind of expensive zip code. And it's actually not too surprising then in that case that people who are living there are taking very, very expensive taxi journeys um, because, well, frankly, they can afford to. So let's go ahead and see where are all of those people from Greenwich coming from. You can see we can just select that and Tableau will filter. So first of all, the, the answer to our question is that the people who are taking these expensive taxi journeys that are ending in Greenwich, they're starting in, in Midtown and in Downtown, and they're starting at LaGuardia and JFK. And you can see this long trail of trip starts uh, out from LaGuardia and JFK. And the reason for that is because the fares that uh, lead way out here to Connecticut are actually negotiated fares. So it's not a metered fare. And what that means is that there's no incentive or reason for the cab driver to turn on the meter right away. They can turn it on anywhere. It doesn't matter. They've already negotiated the rate. And so you can see in a lot of cases, they turn on the meter right when they get to their destination. Now, this is just one question that we can answer with this data source. Of course, there's hundreds of others, hundreds of other interesting data points that we can look at. So let's publish this so other people can explore. I've been working within Tableau Desktop, which is a desktop client, but I can publish this to Tableau Server, which of course I can host on Azure. When I do publish, they'll be able to look at this within a web browser and interact with it, just like I've been showing you. And I'm actually setting my permissions here so that anybody who looks at this will have to log into the database to view it. All right, so our dashboard's been published. Now to log in, I am gonna have to enter my password. We can use the underlying uh, permissions that are on the database. We can also use Active Directory if you want to uh, permission that way with Tableau. Now I can share this visualization with anyone in my organization. They can also filter and change the visualization the same way that you saw me doing. So they can answer questions that are different from the ones that I've originally thought of and intended. In summary, today you saw me building a visualization in minutes on top of Azure SQL Data Warehouse, even though I'm using millions of records of data.
You saw me easily transforming and changing this data into multiple different iterations, so I could see different facets of the data and learn things that I didn't even think about. You also saw me filter down to findings that were interesting to me. And then you saw me share that with other people, so that they can do the exact same thing on their own time.